a lot of people have been asked. Oh, whose phone is that? That's your phone. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're like actually. I'm devastated. not used to this. Welcome back to my channel. This is episode 21 of The Hormone Diaries. Yes, exactly. And this is my friend Lucy, who Hello. is going to be joining us. Um, Lucy and I met at university and we lived together for two, three years. Two slash three years. The reason why I wanted to get Lucy in this video is because she has the copper coil and Ooh. I have the marina coil. There's little T-shaped devices of contraception. A lot of people have been asking for an update on my marina coil situation, so I thought I would combine that mm. with comparing it to the copper coil and doing marina versus copper, because I feel like a lot of people who want to get the coil are like, I don't know which one yeah. to do. Absolutely. Um, but first of all, why did you choose the copper coil? What was your wow. process of getting there? Well, Hannah, um, it's a little bit complicated. Isn't it? <laughs> Isn't it? Isn't it just? I have always had difficult skin mm. and I have tried absolutely everything. And I don't know if you remember at uni, I just tried a lot of different things. Mainly they prescribe you with the hormonal pill um, for skin yeah. um, problems. Yeah. And that was like a three or four, maybe even five year process of trying different things. Absolute pain in the ass. Am I allowed to say that? Yep. Okay, cool. <laughs> Eventually I went to the doctor and was like, look, I need to be put on something Hardcore. Hardcore here. Um, so this is after leaving uni and they said, well, there is this drug called Roaccutane, um, which is very strong, but it is proven to like get rid of acne, basically. And I was like, I Damn. want it. They said, the thing is, um, you have to be on contraception to, um, to have this drug. And I was like, I'm not going to get pregnant. There's literally very little chance. And they're like, you, do, they, you have to sign something to say that you're going to be on contraception. And that's because the drug is so strong that you shouldn't be taking it if you're pregnant. Basically. Yes, yeah, you, yeah. you like, really can't. Um, yeah, and so every time you have a checkup to get more treatment, um, you, they actually have to do a pregnancy test as well. When they asked me um, what contraception I wanted to go on to, they said, these are your different options. I thought, okay, I'm going to steer clear of the hormonal pill because that just didn't agree with me yeah. last time. Um, it made me feel quite imbalanced and I didn't feel great on it. Mm -hmm. So um, they said, well, you could go on to the coil or the implant. And I was like, ooh, I've heard about the coil. Like, because I had friends who were on it mm. and I was very like new to, I, I, I didn't have any understanding of contraception. Uh, Sorry. No, but like, we were always taught about the pill, yeah. and then there are all these other things out there. And I'm when you're a teenager, unwilling. you're just like, Here, here's the pill, and then yeah. it's years until you're exactly. like, wait, what? There so are what other now? things? <laughs> so that is the story of the copper coil. Um, oh. That's called Clyde. <laughs> Your copper coil is called Clyde. Maybe not. I've never named mine. <laughs> I'm not until now. <laughs> That's the I'll story. call mine Bonnie. Then. <laughs> I have the Marina coil, which is a brand of the... Hormonal coil. How long have you had your copper coil? <laughs> Five years. Damn, really? Yeah. Oh my goodness, that long. So I've had um, my coil for a year and five months, I mm. think. So fairly new, veteran, coil veteran. So the thing with the hormonal coil is even though it is hormonal, it is a very low dosage because um, it doesn't have to travel very far because it's in your womb that, like, it, you know, how, how does one explain? If you're taking a pill, it has to go all the way through your bloodstream mm -hmm. to get to your uterus and your ovaries to, like, have the impact of you not getting pregnant. Whereas if it's already down there, you need a, you don't need as high a dosage because it's acting in the area that it needs to be. Main difference is you've got non-hormonal and hormonal. Um, do you know how the copper coil works to prevent pregnancy without it being hormonal? It's like, no! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. It's yeah, the, is it? It's the copper in it, and copper yes. is toxic to sperm. I did know that. I did know that. <laughs> Which is my favourite thing. I just love that, yeah, you just shove some copper up there and the sperm's just like, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> and then the other big difference is how long you can have one in. So for my coil, it's five years max. 
So about now, I'd have to be getting it like mm. switched around if I was in your position. But the copper coil is 10 years. Um, so if that's something. I'm halfway through. Yeah. I just realised that. Halfway through. I'm glad Blimey. we've had this conversation. <laughs> and then the other thing that isn't um, applicable to us right now is that also the copper coil can be used for emergency contraception. I did not know that. Yeah, a, not a lot of people know this because you hear about the morning after pill. But actually, the copper coil is also used if um, you've mm. had unprotected sex and your um, like condom broke or, or whatever happened mm. and you need to uh, prevent a pregnancy after the sex has happened. I guess because, um, again, the sperm and the copper are like... Yeah, I think that's what it must be. With the different pills that you can get, Obviously, they're more effective the sooner you take them. And if you like leave it for like 24, 48, 72 mm. hours, like however long, they become less effective. Right. However, you can have the copper coil inserted up to five days after can you've you? had the unprotected sex. Which yes. I'm learning so much. Then you just then can keep it in. Yeah. That's the thing. The other main difference that I've heard and also heard anecdotally from mm. you and other friends on the copper coil and then from my own experiences, is the difference in periods. <laughs> Babe. Generally, obviously everyone is different, but there tends to be kind of patterns with how people react Bad to... Bad patterns. <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing with the copper coil is a lot of people experience more heavy and more painful periods. I do think it's partly how you're made up um, as to how you respond to it, but I've definitely found that my... Um, build up to um, a period is always a lot more painful than it used to so be. So like your PMS cramps and stuff Yeah, like that. I do remember not that long after getting it um, put in, I remember thinking, oh, uh, this, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is a bit different. You know when you get it fitted, mm. the pain that you have afterwards? <gasps> so we're talking like that. I couldn't function. Like, I, I <laughs> thought I... <laughs> I was like retching over the toilet. I was in so much pain. Really? I was like gonna vomit. Wow, and I remember yeah. like having to go to bed um, and like hot water bottle, painkillers. And I brought a saucepan from the kitchen to put by my bed because I was like, I'm scared I'm gonna throw oh, up from this gosh. pain. Oh. I didn't, but that's how it felt. Yeah. I just take ibuprofen and get on with, with it. it. <laughs> I've definitely felt the pros in terms of like, I feel like my I feel like I am myself mm. and I've not felt out of character in the way that the pill bricks, did. the pill did made me feel like I was not in myself. I was going to ask cuz you said that sometimes you work from home. Mm. Like does your boss or your manager like know why? Um yeah, that's do you have that conversation of like hey, I have really painful periods, can I work yeah, from home? Yeah, yeah, I that's have good. I have had that and it's great. I have some really good women that I work with, so they're really understanding. Yeah. Yeah. I think not a lot of people realise that that's a thing that you can legitimately, like, ask for. Especially mm. if your, like, pains um, and stuff are really debilitating. Like, and you're just like, I can do the work, I just need to do it from my sofa exactly. or my bed. <laughs> it's actually, like, a plus for them because they're getting more out of you. Like, you're, you're being more productive or effective if you're comfortable. So yeah. actually, yeah. And then with me in terms of the marina coil with periods, what happened was um, I, for the first like month or so that I had the marina, I spotted continuously. It was really? like just bleeding every day. Um, but it was so little. So like it got to the point where I was just either wearing period underwear or just using panty liners. And then it just got to the point where I like, it was so little, I just like didn't care. And I would just wear my black underwear and just be like, whatever, <laughs> it's what? fine. Yeah. Because <laughs> it was so little and I just couldn't be bothered with um, panty liners mm. or, or um, like sometimes I would use the menstrual cup, but when it's so mm. light, it's like really tough getting it in yeah. and yeah. stuff. So I was like, oh no. But then I got really ill and that's when all of that stuff happened. Mm. And so my body was just like, no periods, shut down. Um, and then once I got yeah. better again, yeah. I had one period, like kind of ish period. It was like my body going, oh, we're normal again. Let's bleed. Did wow. that. And then I've had nothing since. Really? Yeah. I have but, a question. Yeah. When you were ill, mm -hmm. 
um, did you were you allowed to keep the marina coil in? Was that all okay? Yeah, um, yeah, the, it was fine. It just stayed. It just, it just stayed just, in. It stayed and it's still there now. What's happened now? actually with having the lower dosage mm. because it's not going all through my bloodstream my boobs still hurt really? but, just, but just not as much so I'm not getting the periods but I'm still getting like I occasionally get cramping yeah. and um and then my boobs will hurt but only for a few days instead oh, of like yeah. two weeks and so in my head I'm like oh this is when I would like this would be like yeah. just before I would have my period but then obviously there's no period it's really weird. That's really, it's almost yeah. like, a, like a ghost period. The only thing that is kind of worrying is that because I don't have a period, occasionally I'll get like cramps and it feels like they're random and I'm like, oh my God, is my coil like getting displaced mm. or like is something wrong with the coil um, because then I don't have a period to go along with it. Yeah. Since I've gotten healthy again and like the PMS symptoms have kind of come back, um, I was like, oh, do I want this? Do I just want to go back on the pill? So yeah. I have zero symptoms whatsoever. But to be honest, I like the fact that I do not have to think about it. Mm, and like yeah. the idea of taking a pill every day, um, because now that um, I'm healthy again and I have the stoma bag, I don't have to take medication for my <laughs> for my That's ulcerative great. colitis. So before when I was taking yeah, the pill, course. yeah, before when I was taking the pill, it was like fine because I was taking other medication as well. So mm. I was like, oh, I'm never going to forget this. Yeah. Whereas now I'm like, hmm, it I'm, could easily slip. I might forget yeah. it. Some of our friends have said, like Lucy, this is ridiculous. You keep talking about your bad period, just get the flipping thing changed. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think, I think because, um, but I guess like I'm glad that I have been on the copper coil mm -hmm. up until now. Actually, even with the really rubbish periods, but um, five years is a long time. It's a long time, and I think that's actually a good marker just to kind of reassess anyway. Um, mm -hmm. So, but I, I, I'd be interested in trying the marina just to see how it works with me. Yeah. Um, and like, like you said, definitely it's not things. interested in the pill anymore. You're like, no, no you're I would like... never go back to that. Yeah. So those are our experiences with yeah. the uh, hormonal and the cop coil. Thank you so much, Lucy, for joining me and sharing your experiences. Thank um, you for having me. If you would like to um, check out more of what Lucy does, as well as her day job. She writes poetry and you're setting up a website soon where you're going to put lots of poetry and yeah. so I will link that in the description um, if you're into that and you can check it out. Please let us know if you have got the copper coil, the hormonal coil and if you relate to any of our experiences or if you've had very different experiences to ours, would love to hear them in the comments. Um, I think one of the greatest things about this series is the comment section and mm. people sharing their own experiences and learning from each other and things like that. So much appreciated. Um, do give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe because I make new videos every week and pre-order the Hormone Diaries book. It's out on the 13th Woo! of June. <laughs> pre-order the book. Also link in the description. Um, all right. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.